I live on a large, luxurious, beautiful, converted grain barge, sitting on the grey-green mud of the Thames, in Chelsea, of course. And I'm sitting here too. I'm also quite large and beautiful, and have, like my boat, converted often in the last 69 years. Now I'm in a bit of a quandary. That is to say, I don't know whether to live or die. Have I now lived it? Has being human had enough of me? Or have I got it wrong? What an unravelling has gone on, a winnowing and a freshing. I want to unchaff myself right down to my essence. So little wonder my home is a grain barge, at the moment stuck in the mud and tethered to the bank. Me too. When the tide comes in, perhaps I should cut the moorings and the mooring ropes and go with it. But the river flows both ways, and that bit of driftwood that I'm now watching can disappear upstream and come right back downstream to its starting point, just outside my window. I like security. That's why I'm here in Chelsea, with the watchman, the stout mooring ropes, and the gates marked private. No hoy polloi here. I fit in well with the King's Road, its superficial eccentricity passing for originality. I'm disgusted with my materialism, and yet I cling to it. So I'm back to the predicament. It seems to me that the only way not to be what I don't want to be is dead. It's most annoying because I know I've almost made it. I'm nearly there, nearly a unique and wondrous being. But I'm tired and I might confused. Perhaps I have gone as far as this human can. I'm tired. I need to find God, I think. God speaks. Chris Ketty e eum quare. I speak a little in Latin, as Sarah loves it, and it might help me to get through to her. It gives me some sort of gravitas. She's studying Latin in an evening class, advanced level. I remember that she, at school, did Latin for her higher certificate. She says she's confused, but from my point of view, it is not confusing. It is all so evident. I really think I am evident. Dona, dono, dona, in ludis facetis, translation. I give gifts and you play games with the gifts. Sarah, you do not think there is a donor or God. There are, there are sounds abounding. Are you blind? Deaf, obdurate, stultissima. I love that word, and I'm using it quite a lot. It means most stupid one. So I often go around to my and say, stultissima. It was tried, it's a good word. <laughs> so the point of writing this is to seek clarification. And I hope I'll find the missing clues of what's fucking me up, stopping me living. I will and I know it's going to take an immense endeavour and resolve, recall events, people and circumstances throughout my life, significant happenings, and hopefully may illuminate my purpose and meaning. Like Job, I rail at that God I cannot find. God speaks. As species in locum iniquium. If there's some Latin scholars here, talk to me afterwards. <laughs> Do you hear me? You do not look in the right place, is the translation of that. Did we come all this way for birth or death? We'll see. I may sound pretentious quoting from the journey of the Magi, but great poems are my Gospels. This is a serious matter. The outcome of this research is suicide or life. It is a glorious day, and I'm about to go to my club to play tennis. I'm apprehensive because I sometimes feel every bit of my 69 years. For one thing, I'm not too fit at the moment, and for another, I find some of the members there snobbish and often bitchy. I'm feeling chuffed because my two weeks ago, I decided to have some coaching. 
my game is rusty. For heaven's sake, not surprising. I've only played about 20 times in the last 45 years. When I was young, I was quite a champion. The coach is older than I, and an ex-proper champion. He's really toothsome and most encouraging. I was absolutely relaxed and felt I had nothing to lose. And although puffed and tired, after half an hour, I'd gone through all the shots and he said, hear this, hear this, Sally, your strokes are almost perfect, but watch the ball. I felt like shouting with joy and couldn't as I was out of breath. But he said, you must get fit. Start playing a lot and then come back to me after I finished at Wimbledon and Queen's. Don't go to any other coaches while I'm away. Give me your card and I'll phone you when I have a space. Oh, how I wish I'd been fit and slim and somehow had, had amazed him. I feel somewhat bad about you who are reading this because you may never know if I'm alive or dead or doing the conventional things of having an affair with a ski instructor, so to speak. But from my point of view, it's on the cards. So I've been swimming a lot when I can find time away from work. I'm now putting on my newly brought sports bra, pleated skirt, my white t-shirt, and I'm struggling inelegantly into my pants with a reinforced panel in the front. Ready at last, I pick up my racket and drive my bright red micro to the club to find the club tennis and find out that it has been cancelled because it's the day of the garden party. I am allergic to such events, so fed up, go home, reflecting on the way I how quite often I'm motivated to do things because of men, like losing weight. I feel a bit ashamed that at my age I still behave like that. Oh, I love sex. Ah, men. So be it. It's a problem, isn't it? I long for something that I'm pretty sure I will not find, not now. And now is when I know how. Oh shit, oh shit, I miss him so. The near miss of a lifetime. Tears well up when I repeat his name. Samuel. Samuel. Sam. Sam. A consummate, soulmate, sexmate, playmate, workmate. Music, theatre, poetry, love-making, food. Then he died. Not totally unexpectedly, but too soon. Always too soon. I want to telephone him to talk about his death. And where's the reality in that? I want him to know that all along I knew he was a con artist, an opportunist, a thief, a womanizer, a phony, with a deluded sense of grandeur, and that I loved him. I wasn't expecting a clue about my predicament as soon, but here I think is one. Maybe I want to follow him. Not that I or Sam are sure, were sure of a life after this, but there is an urge in the part of me to leave. My soul feels a magnet pull away. And where's the reality in that? I get out of my tennis gear and look at myself in the long, mir long mirror. The scars crisscrossing my stomach, my unfirm limbs, and I feel bereft of youth, of vigour. Listless, I lie down on the sofa, propping myself up with a couple of killing cushions behind my head so that I can watch the ducks and the geese on the river. Why had I decided to live alone? John of the 40 years marriage is now living somewhere else. His departure left regrets and loneliness as well as relief. The latest attempt to be together didn't work out, so we split up again with financial arrangements, meaning we no longer had the money that we'd had together. And this ex-pool deluxe is having to work much harder. I try to convince myself that what matters to me is integrity, not the money. What the hell? What the hell? What the hell? Remonstrates Mr. Bell. I can't work capital letters, Archie. I'm bewildered by the insistence, insistency of this driving force in me, the need to risk, to be true to my feelings and myself. But have I found myself the one to be true to? And who cares if I'm true or not? God, Deo gratia. For God's sake, Sarah, you do. I'll answer my own questions. I do. God, you will not get anywhere like this 
I, 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 me, 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 you egocentric, narcissistic, ingrowing soul male, you block out those who want to listen to you, and you block me out too. I enjoy my work. The private therapy practice is booming. Lots of clients. I love it. It's such a privilege to be able to help people programmed by the past to free themselves so that they can discover and use the energy that was held back by indecision, fear and habit. To watch them start to recognize, respect and express their feelings and to find meaning in their lives. To help them come to understand and accept the pain, that pain is the manure from which to grow. Oh, I can wax lyrical about this work. As time passes without any proselytizing, each client becomes deeply interested in their being, their soul, and why they're here on this earth. God. Eh, who, Sarah? Kailurium actis the service. Alas, Sarah, why did you not learn from them? Not only those in this practice here in Chelsea, but also those inmates in London's high security prisons, where for many years I worked with murderers, sex offenders, and men of violence. God, I repeat, why did you not learn from them? I have this feeling that I'm passing through this human life and have arrived at some level of consciousness that no longer needs this body. God, aha! Yesterday evening, Jan and Nicholas came over for our monthly think tank session. Our theme was truth. Here's how it went, not word for word, but in essence. Truth is to be aspired to. Only aspired to, not ascertained. Certainty is not a possible. We find truth in writing sometimes. Yes, through metaphor, parable, poetry, music sometimes, art sometimes. Aye, there's the rub. Because it's not between people, we humans. Even between we three can we be truthful? Not from an absolute viewpoint. But we could try. I trust you both, so can I be truthful? You say that you trust us, but I wonder. Right then, <coughs> tell us how you truly are. Oh, the consternation in my heart. I hate him for asking that. I look so well. I'm beautifully situated in my boat. And now it's rocking near to sinking. I want them to... Oh, fuck it. I'm dedicated to the truth. I want to die. Silence. Histrionics. It can't be true, you have come so far. What's this? What's this, you don't believe me? You trusted friends, ha! Can't receive my truth. That's only part of the truth. There's a part of you that must want to live. That's not the truth I'm talking of, the immediate bit that is now past wanting to die. So you are telling us truth cannot be caught. It is ephemeral, only a vibration after it has been stated. Yes. That was the truth, but it isn't now. That finished that discussion. Nicholas and Jan then asked whether I was fit to be a therapist. I have often wondered. If you kill yourself, not you, but your friends, clients and your children will suffer. Was I depressed? Should I have therapy? Should not God life decide the time of my death? They missed the point. I'm not depressed, just in a predicament. I feel played out. And if I am in God life, God says, up today. Great, you're catching on. I can create my own death. If it seems to happen to me, the 49 bus or something in God's life's timing, it's still me creating it. It's just a question of definition and who is who and what is what. At this point, I brought out some chilled white wine, Pouligny Montrachet, of course. God. Benedicte. Cheers. NB. Something must be getting through, else how could I write down what I seem to hear? Strangely, these thoughts or words type themselves out in italics, almost of their own accord. Even though the font I use is Times New Roman. I am fascinated by the origin of words, hence my love of Latin. Clever and intriguing of someone to write it to me. Slightly doggerel, though. If I manage to help my clients to find a meaning to their lives by getting in touch with their feelings and freeing their thinking, 
maybe I should do the same. Free myself of taut thoughts and safe feelings. Break away from conformity. Yeah, come on, Lindy, break away from conformity. <laughs>